All right, so today I wanted to talk about uh, one of the platforms that I use for trading. So this platform, as you can see here, is called Street Smart Edge. This platform is if you are a customer or if you have a brokerage account opened with Charles Schwab. Uh, I've been using this platform for about 10 years uh, on and off. Uh, it's actually quite a very robust platform. It just you know, kind of starts off awfully simplistic and I didn't realize how, um, how much more robust the platform itself could be. So I just wanted to break it down because over the years I've never been able to find a good video uh, for myself. And so hopefully if this can help somebody else who's using this platform, uh, we'll go ahead. So right now I do have two screens up. You should likely only be able to see this screen right here where the mouse is going around. Um, and that is just because this is my primary screen. Um, eventually, I will record what the other screen looks like. I tried recording it all at the same time and it just kind of makes it look like a real like fish eye lens. So it just didn't look good. So I figured I'd break it down. So anyway, this program again is called Street Smart Edge as seen here. Um, I am running um, Windows on my iMac. So I'm actually able to download it. If you are a Mac user, you will either have to run Parallels if you want to run the program or you can run it in the cloud which would be using a Citrix receiver, which I did for many years until I realized that the couple second lag that came along with it was not conducive to trading if you're trying to get in and out on a, on a fast basis. If you're doing like long-term swing or investment strategies, then it doesn't really matter. But for me, I, I actually am running Windows, so you can see here, you know, running Windows on, this is an iMac. Um, so I partitioned my hard drive and so, about 100, 200 gigs is uh, earmarked for Windows and the rest the remaining is for my Mac services. So I have to kind of restart and I can do a video on that later. But right now uh, I am actually running the program that's downloaded. So it does actually run a little more smooth than if I were to run the Citrix receiver, which again, I can take a video of that later. So basically just going through my boxes here, we'll kind of start at the top. So this platform, you kind of set your screen of how big it is you want it to be. And so I have it that I want it to take up my full screen because when I'm trading, I don't want any other distractions. But what I really like about this program is the tabs. Um, you can actually have tabs like you were in like Microsoft Excel or something else that the tabs themselves, uh, once this loads up, it'll bring a whole new screen. So I actually have about four main tabs that I use. This one trade, this is my primary screen. Very rarely during the day do I ever get off of this screen. Uh, the next one, screen and research. This is for like my investments that I'm looking through, like typically later in the day or, or on the weekend. And then I have trade, uh, trade MacBook Pro when I ha I'm using my, my little laptop. Uh, basically everything is just shrunken down so that that would actually fit my screen on my MacBook. That way I'm using the screen to its fullest extent. And then same thing, just a research screen on my MacBook. So exact same thing, just everything's kind of condensed. I get to use it more. So right now, um, this is just, it was programmed on QuantumScape, which is, you know, ticker symbol QS. We can put it on something that most people have heard of, like Tesla. Um, this is an after hours, that's why you don't see anything. So if I were to change after hours or take after hours off, um, there you go. And so that looks more like what a, a chart that people are used to. Um, so what I'm doing over here is you can click this tab button and I have a couple charts that are pre-saved. I have the one minute, the two minute, five minute, 15, 30, 60, and then the daily. And that would mean each candle in, its, in and of itself is worth whatever it's clicked on. So right now each candle represents one minute. And what I like is you can, you know, just zoom in really, really quickly and it'll give you the ability to see. And, you know, again, if you're at a five minute, you know, so on and so forth, it, it actually just changes the way the chart looks uh, based on how you're trading. Um, down here I have the RSI. Uh, relative strength index and then just the volume bars. I don't like it when it's in the chart itself because sometimes if you have a big volume bar, it can get mixed up with the actual, um, with the bar itself. Um, I have an orders, um, I have a positions window and then I have an account uh, order status window. They're actually the same box, just one is earmarked for positions and one is for orders. And that is just if, uh, you know, I have orders go in and positions, I don't wanna have to click between the tabs. I wanna be able to look real quick and see what I have you know, if I have any positions open or if there's any partial fills. Um, and then over here, 
this is kind of like your end all be all trade ticket window. Um, I put in the quantity of how many shares I want. Um, based on how many shares you have, I like about Schwab is it actually tells you how much money is required to make that trade. Um, uh, you know, I have Tesla set up to just preset at 25 shares because it, it's such a, a fast mover, I don't want to take anything else. Whereas I think every other stock is preset when I go to it, it should be on 100. Um, you can choose your, you know, order type. Do you want a market order, a limit order, a limit invisible? Uh, a market or a primary peg and then you of course put your price and then your timing uh, do you want a day order or um, you know the IOC or LOC uh, order and so and then I just have all these little ribbons that kind of gives me more information I can get rid of them if you don't want them um, and then of course you have market depth which is just uh, Schwab's way of calling them the level twos now again nothing's moving right now because the market itself is closed but had it been open uh, these things would be moving, going really fast, and then the tape would be running down, uh, giving you giving you information. Over here, I have Tesla again. This is my primary window that I'm trading in. This is my five minute of whatever I'm at. So this symbol right here is linking. So these two charts are linked. So when I change this to say Apple, this will change as well. And as you may have noticed too, is that this quantity now switched to 100 because I have everything else, I think, except Tesla to automatically default at 100 shares. Um, and again, you can pick and choose whatever you want. Um, so these are five minute. This is a five minute chart. This is a one minute chart. And then I just have the spy here just to see overall how the market's doing. I have my watch list. Um, I don't really mess with the watch list too much. These are just kind of like a handful of stocks I go through. Have a little bit of news window bar. And then that is basically the chart. Up here, I do have multiple accounts with Schwab, and so I can just kind of click this real quick, and it'll link up to whichever account I want to be on, uh, depending on what I'm trading. And then when you want to get more information about your balances, you can pull it up here and take a look. Now, right now, it says that I have $25,000 balance due. Uh, that's essentially a margin call. I used to use this account to trade in. I don't use it for my active trading account because I use uh, Lightspeed now. So that's why it's there. I just defunded this account. But if there was money in there, it would tell you how much money's in it. The today's change, that's if you're trading, how much you have available to trade, your margin buying power if you have a margin account, um, so on and so forth. And then available withdrawal, that would just be a settled account or how much money is settled that you could withdraw immediately if needed to. So um, let's see if I open up um, pre-market. Yeah, so it still doesn't say, because the market's closed, These this button right here would say buy, this would say sell, and this would say short. Uh, they, they're not highlighted right now because the market's closed. There's nothing that you can do. Um, so I click smart order. So that means that these this order, so now they did pop up, and that's just because uh, if I sent the order in now, it would just wait until the market does open, and then it would execute those orders. So buy, sell, or short. Short would mean to go short. Um, but I do have it set up on, you know, um, uh, direct access uh, marketing, uh, so I don't have to worry about sending it to Schwab and then they send it to their own market makers. I just decided I wanted to go directly to NASDAQ or the ARCA book, typically NASDAQ, and then go from there. So if you have any questions on how to use this, um, let me know. Otherwise, I can take a, I'll take a separate video that kind of goes over the other screen. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to go through it. Um, than to kind of push it all into one screen.